One of the most difficult obstacles to an adventure is that point where you make that leap from dream to actually physically making it happen. The guys and girls that do the Texas 200 are dreamers, but they make that leap. That leap the average person won't. For the third year in a row, I'm making my way south on 77 with Candio in tow for another start at the Texas 200. The goal? Eating boiled shrimp at Magnolia Beach some five days and 200 miles later. Let me set the stage here. The Texas 200 is a huge undertaking. I chose one of the harder routes, as in building my own boat in my garage and sailing it solo. There are also many dangers that must be contended with. These dangers are always reiterated over and over on the club Facebook page with many knowledgeable comments that follow the original posts. One of the top dangers is the sun. The wisdom handed down from the veterans to the newbies is that any exposed skin will burn and death can occur in some cases. During our adventure we stay covered up in fast wicking polyester. Other dangers we were reminded of on the internet include flesh-eating bacteria, oyster reefs, barges, ships, rogue waves, rattlesnakes, stingrays, shallow water, and the Port Aransas Ferry Crossing, but I'll get to that later. I rolled into Raymondville Sunday afternoon where my hotel accommodations were ready for me. My plan was to leave early, get to Port Mansfield, find a boat ramp, put the boat in the water, and catch up with the fleet by Camp One. It was a short day, only 22 miles, so I figured it was doable. And since I was going to be leaving early in the morning with no sunlight, I figured I'd better get those trailer lights working. I looked up, and lo and behold, there was an auto supply within walking distance, along with a water burner. I ate and made my repairs. Two years ago, I was just happy to make the start finishing the boat build with just two days to spare. When I got to Corpus Christi, I was happy to make it that far and retired at the JFK Bridge, loaded up, headed for a soft bed and the air conditioning. Last year, I was in it to finish, but center war problems put an end to my trip. I tapped out like an MMA fighter about to have his life choked out of him. Again, bailed at the JFK Bridge. In a quarter of a mile, your destination is ahead. It was a little slow going at the start. Oh, if I had just run that halyard up to the top of that mast, I could have put my spinnaker up and I would be getting somewhere. Once I got away from Port Mansfield, the wind did begin to cooperate. Good news, the centerboard went down on the first try. You see this knot right here, since it's up against here, that means the centerboard is all the way down. I'm gonna be able to go to weather. So last year's problems are now fixed.
starting to pass some people. It's not so late after all. Dolphin just surfaced about a foot from my elbow. Right, right here. Look at this, 100% leak proof. But you have to have that thing zipped up. All right, lunchtime. to the entrance of the land cut. The speed is uh, over six knots. The Texas 200 is not a race, but if you see a boat in front of you, it's always fun to catch them. Of the 43 boat fleet, I was one of the last ones to leave, but finished at the land cut about, about mid-pack. It's nice to not arrive first so that someone is there to grab your bow line at the camp. It's also good to not be last so you can play it forward and help the next guys as they come in. Participants come from all over the country, from Washington State to Florida, and at least 13 different states were represented. We are not your stereotypical sailboat yacht types. If America's Cup Sailing is Formula One auto racing, we're the guys at the local quarter mile dirt track. It was a good day, an easy day, unlike last year's first day where half the boats didn't make Camp One. Tomorrow will be a bit longer. 31 nautical miles and a much tougher camp to get to.
During the process of building a boat, sometimes you run into obstacles and challenges that have to be evaluated, assessed, and over time figured out a course of action. Out on the water, there is no leisurely time frame for making decisions. The problem must be appraised and dealt with in a much more timely fashion. That goes for fixing your boat or dealing with changing conditions. Finally out of the land cut and into Baffin Bay, the wind picked up and Camp 2 was only 9 nautical miles away. To get to the next camp, I'll have to head east and tack into a headwind. Then I have to get as close as I can to shore after dodging shallow waters. Well, that was my almost perfectly executed plan. With a suspension of disbelief, this is a little dramatization of the actual events of the Camp 2 landing. No cameras at the time were running to document the events. Anyway, everything was going as planned. I was tacking into a stiff headwind and making good ground on my destination. As planned, I was going to solidly run my boat aground, drop anchor in the calf deep water, and spend the night wherever I landed. My anchor was in the well of the bow of the boat. With the boat solidly grounded, I got out to grab the anchor. I cried. It turned out the jib sheet was caught in a cleat, and the boat was perfectly balanced to sail off on her own. And sail. Luckily, she came to rest on a sandbar about 600 yards away. A couple of fellow sailors saw the predicament and rescued Candy O. she was solidly anchored and a lesson was learned. It was not my intention to bring back ghost riding a whip. Google's your friend. Combine the normal exhaustion of sailing all day with the adrenaline rush of thinking you lost your boat, add on top of that unobstructed wind for great airflow through the cabin, not a mosquito in sight, and you have a recipe for a great night's sleep. I was going to need that good night's sleep because tomorrow I would be in uncharted territory. Well, figuratively, not literally. After leaving Camp 2, I'll get back into the ICW and make my way towards the JFK Bridge where my previous 200s have ended. From there, the rest of the trip will pose challenges I've yet to encounter in my two failed attempts. One of the challenges of the day is crossing the Corpus Christi Bay. Winds can be high, waves can be big, and the water is usually rough in June. I will venture out of the ICW and depend on my navigation skills to find Stingray Hole. This gap will take me to the Corpus Christi ship channel and on to the much feared Port Aransas Ferry Crossing. The Ferry Crossing has been described as a real life game of Frogger. Four ferries filled with cars traverse back and forth across the ship channel in somewhat regular intervals. If that's not bad enough, sometimes a ship or barge can get into the mix to make things really interesting. From there, dodging commercial traffic is the dominant concern, and on to Mud Island, site of Camp 3.
nice little stop there. Pick up some water burger. JFK in the in my rear view. Ice is doom 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 doom. doom. like uh, the corridor to the Corpus Christi Bay. And I'll uh, put the camera down until I get through it. And when I get to the other side, I'll let you know how it came out. After all the hand wringing and angst about the Corpus Christi Bay and the Port Aransas Ferry crossings, everything went smoothly. Any less wind and the bay crossing would have been boring. Any more, it may have been terrifying. It was fun and the conditions were perfect. Time to settle in to Camp 3. Twenty other boats part of the Texas 200 opted to do a different, more challenging route, starting up north at Magnolia Beach. They traveled south against prevailing winds and met our traditional route fleet at Camp 3. Our fleet numbers had swelled to almost 60 boats for the last two days of sailing. Leaving Camp 3, I had two options to get to Army Hole, the last camp on the trip. One was to use the back bays, which required a bit of navigation and dodging of shallow waters. The other option was to take the ICW, which required brainless navigation and deep waters. The drawback was also accompanied by a lot of commercial traffic and was a much longer route. The trip was worth it, camping out at Army Hole, an old abandoned World War II Army Air Corps airfield, where the runways were still visible. Magnolia Beach, according to this GPS, at 10:57 a.m. That's a cool-looking boat. Look at that, Magnolia Beach right there. <laughs> 